Good morning, delegates. Here are the stories we're covering today. An extreme update for the Ukrainian people. Russian forces have taken Kharkiv. The city, home to over 1 million Ukrainians, is now under control of Russian forces who are establishing a provisional occupation government, while the battle for the control of Kyiv continues. President Zelensky has pleaded for his Western allies for help, saying their support has waned recently in a time when they need it most. He says he fears he will soon be captured or killed unless Ukrainian forces have more resources. The Chinese government has begun a crackdown on Hong Kong. Citing COVID-19 concerns, the government has brought in armed forces to enforce curfew and other lockdown restrictions. Some are skeptical of Jinping's motives, however, saying that these lockdowns are a way to further the onward march of authoritarianism in the Far Eastern nation. In a more aggressive move, Chinese armed forces have begun mobilizing around Taiwan. Military officials say these are just routine exercises, but the citizens of Taiwan are becoming increasingly concerned as commercial Chinese boats are being escorted to shore by the Navy. The US and UK governments got together to discuss cybersecurity concerns and exchange intelligence. However, the talks between the Allied nations do not seem to have gone over well. The United Kingdom has put out a press release debunking claims made by Chinese journalists, stating there is a strain on the relationship. However, sources close to the Johnson administration say this is damage control and that the tension between President Biden and their Prime Minister are at their highest. As talks between the two allies stall, so do approval ratings for both leaders, with recent polling showing them both on thin ice. The United States delegation in the UN committees have taken interesting positions, as some of them have explored lifting sanctions away from Iran. This has been a cause for suspicion in both the CSTD and the IAEA. If this were to happen, it will be interesting to see how this will affect Biden's popularity at home. In the Security Council, ideas seem to be dominated by India, Russia, and Brazil, who have promoted the adoption of stronger domestic security measures. The USA and France have struggled to gain support in the committee, which proves dangerous for the permanent members' ambitions. Thank you for tuning in today, and that's the way the hack is boils.